Dear students, let us start back our discussion on the design of various facilities. In the previous interaction, we talked about the parking characteristics, the suppressed demand and the bus space. In today's interaction, we are going to discuss about the bus shelters and the truck levies. So, let us start with the bus shelters. Now, bus shelter is one essential feature which shall be provided at all such locations where the bus stops are being provided. We dis discussed about the bus base and we said that this street section is going to be decided on the basis of the number of buses which are going to stop there. So, if even if there is a one bus, there should be a shelter at the back where the passengers can wait for the bus to arrive and if they get down, if they want to take rest, they can also take a rest at that location. So, it is a sort of a waiting area for the passengers in general where they are looking for their bus to arrive and then they can board up. Now, when we are looking at this type of uh, aspect, then it should be able to provide different type of protections, the protections like from sun, rain, wind etcetera. And at the same time, there should be some basic information which should be given to the passenger and that basic information we are going to look at that what that type of information is there which should be provided to the passengers. Apart from it, if the bus is going to arrive at say 5 minutes from now or 10 minutes from now, then some adequate seating spaces should be there, so that uh, the passengers can sit down and can relax and wait. Now, when we are looking at the locations of these uh, bus stops and shelters, we have talked about some of the factors previously when we looked about the stops and laybys. Here, these location criteria which can be there is the proximity to the adjacent junction and the pedestrian crossing, accesses to the residential areas or the development which are there in the adjoining areas. Footway or verge width is another thing which needs to be taken care of because what is this width where we are going to provide uh, the bus shelter. The bands in the road, if they are there, then they are going to create a problem or on street parking, if it is there, then also it is going to happen. So, it means we are also talking about a case where there is a street section and we are providing a bus shelter at this point. Now, here you can see that uh, there is a area where the number of buses are getting stopped. So, it means it is a one major location with respect to the passenger demand and the passengers are moving to different directions. So, they are going to take different routes. So, what is being done is that all of this space is being added together. So, we have a composite bus bay location. So, it is away from the main carriageway and it is also being done by way of the railing being provided here. And then what you found is there is a shelter being provided at the top as well as there is a seating area also being given so that the passengers can just sit down there and they can wait. So, if they are not going to board 152, they are waiting for some other bus that they can wait while sitting there. Here also you can see another design where adequate width is being provided here. So, the size of uh, the shelter is up to this one and this is an additional width in front of the shelter. At the same time, there is a width at the back of the shelter. So, if there are pedestrians who are moving, who are crossing like this, then they can utilize those spaces at the back. The passengers are going to utilize this space if they are uh, sitting here. And then whenever the bus arrives at this point, they are going to be standing in this area and they will utilize the bus service. So, in that sense, if we are trying to look at that what type of information should be provided so that the passenger remains comfortable, the very first thing is that what is the service number which is available at that bus stop. It may happen that there are going to be 5 routes which are coming at that particular uh, bus stop. So, we have to provide all those information. What are the various destinations which are connected? Can we provide the information about the intermediate location served and this is quite possible if we utilize the route map or the timetables of the buses. So, person knows that at what particular time period they are going to get a particular number. Route details, information on fares, how much they need to pay for different type of uh, bus services, information on alternate stops in the vicinity. So, there may happen that uh, all of the routes are not there on that particular bus stop and you are looking for some other 
uh, route number. So, if that information is being given in terms of that on which particular alternate stop in this area that is available, then the passenger can move to that stop. Then the services types which are available for the selected destinations or during different times of the day, that type of information can also be given. Sometimes it may happen that uh, one service is not working or one route is not working. So, whatever those type of announcements are there, then those announcements should be there available on that bus stop. So, it can be related to services, routes, stopping places, maintenance routines, etcetera, etcetera. Maps or diagrams for routes as well as local area, they should be provided which says that you are here and then on the basis of that the passenger can identify if they have to go some nearby location, what is the road which is going to take them to that area. Contact details of emergency numbers, this is also quite important. So, all those numbers, if there is an emergency, medical emergency or a safety security emergency, whatever type of emergency is there, if those numbers are being displayed, then they can be utilized by the passengers. Then information on the nearby important locations, points of attractions, public buildings, etcetera. If that is also being provided, then it becomes quite important for those who are new to the area and this information will help them to identify the location where they have to go by walking and they can take the route to reach those locations. So, these are different type of informations which can be made available at any of the bus shelter. Now, here what we can see is that uh, there is the bus system maps or routes are being provided and various types of connectivities or services are being provided. Then there are telephone numbers also being given for uh, the different uh, reasons. Okay. So, they are being made available at this bus stop. Here what we can see is the number of routes and their schedules are being given here. Then uh, the fare is also being defined. So, they knows that there are two type of services, one is charging 3.7, another one is charging 4.8 pounds. So, this is an information which is being given there and uh, this one and uh, this also can be a, a variable type of a thing. So, a, a electronic display can also be there. What we can see is the buses you are going to get for different uh, locations in what time period is also being defined here. Then uh, there are different numbers of the buses routes which are there, they are being also defined and if there are certain issues with respect to maintenance, repair, etcetera or the disruption of services, etcetera, then that is also being clearly defined. So, if a person is uh, suppose requiring to have a stop 42, but then because this road is closed for that, now they know that the bus is not going to that particular area. So, they have to take some alternate arrangement or alternate route or uh, some nearby location which can be reached, they can utilize that type of a service. Now, when we talk about the design attributes, so whatever bus shelter we are going to have, first of all it should protect the passengers from uh, various climatic conditions. It should be able to have sufficient space so that the informations as we have discussed previously, so all those type of informations can be displayed on that bus shelter. Then the partitions if being utilized, then they should be transparent in nature. The reason being that uh, it provides the visibility across the areas, that is one thing. So, it ensures the safety and security of the people who are there in that. At the same time, uh, the bus which is approaching to the bus stop, if on that side, uh, the sh shelter is not having a transparent partition, then the passengers will not be able to know that the bus is now arriving. So, they will not be ready to board the bus. So, for all of these reasons, the partitions as far as possible, they should be transparent. There should not be any obstruction to the path of boarding and embarking by the passengers. So, there should be a total clear way being provided. Timetables which can be there, but they should be placed on the opposite side to the direction of the bus arrival. So, if the bus is arriving like this and this is the bus uh, shelter, then the timetable can be on this side. Then the advertisements if they are being placed and uh, many of the times this is a requirement because you have to get the money or the revenue so as to maintain those stops. So, the advertisements can be at the back side. Now, this is not hampering any visibility as such. 
but this side nothing has to be provided. So, it should be clear. So, the visibility should be maintained both way uh, for passengers to this direction and for driver to this direction to understand if there are passengers and the bus has to be stopped for that reason. Then material which is being used at this uh, bus shelter that should be free of uh, vandal conditions, it should be easy to clean and it should require the minimum maintenance. Suitable arrangements for persons with disabilities shall also be made, so it should be an accessible design. What type of uh, accessibility arrangements may be in terms of ramp, in terms of railings, in terms of tactile tiles, all those things whatever are required for uh, uh, their requirements that should be provided. It shall have a setback of at least 0.5 meters from the curb side, so that says is that if we are having a shelter like this, so then this distance is minimum 0.5 meters. Then sitting places should be provided and if these sitting places are being provided from with respect to the ground level or the uh, footpath level, then we are going to have the seating like this. So, this height is what? This is 450 mm high and then we may provide the hand rails here and if these are being provided then these are going to be 200 mm above the sitting space or the surface. Now, this sitting spaces which are being provided, they should be such that the person is not just falling down. So, their gradient has to be maintained, their material should be a non-slip material and then they should get uh, dry as early as possible. If say there is a rain and uh, there is a heavy wind due to which it has got wet. So, that is also to be ensured, it should be easy to clean and it should be robust in design and material. If the shelter is located on the pedestrian sidewalk, then the clear pathway of 1.8 meters width with a clearance of 0.5 meters shall be made available at the back. What does that mean is that now there are pedestrians, so these pedestrians are moving at the back of it. So, our shelter is this one, now this is 1.8 meters plus here 0.5 meter being taken, this is a buffer. So, we are providing the effective 1.8 meters by way of a provision of 0.5 meter buffer here. If more than one bus is expected to stop or it is an intermediate major stop with a minimum space at front of shelter, 3 meter wide shall be provided to accommodate variation in the bus stopping position and subsequent movement of passengers. So, what it says is that if we are going to have multiple buses which are going to stop here then this shelter which is being provided first of all is going to be either continuous one or it can be like this, two shelters can be there. Now, this space being provided, this is 3 meters instead of 0.5 meters from the curb side. So, this is 3 meters and then this is the size of the shelter and then at the back again 1.8 meters if there are pedestrians. Now, on this shelter when we are looking at it, so uh, as we said that the advertisements can be placed, so they are going to be panels. Now, whatever these panels are there from this uh, surface, if uh, we are providing something like this, then this is the area which is being utilized for display. So, this display is point 9 to 1.8 meters from the ground surface. So, that is the height. So, it is a open area being provided here. If we are looking for the park and ride systems, then adequate measures has to be taken so as to provide the parking of the cycles etcetera. Dust bins should be there at the shelter so that uh, no dirty things are lying around. Then if uh, more buses are expected to stop and there are going to be lot many passengers, drinking water and toilet facilities shall be made available. 
Then there are two types of designs which are usually used. One is the cantilever type, another is a enclosed type. When we say cantilever type, it means it is uh, like this. So, so, this is a carriageway. So, this is a cantilever design. But when we are looking at the another one which is an enclosed design, it means uh, it is totally closed on the three sides, but yes the transparent material has been utilized uh, for making that. The dimensions when we are looking at it, so the cantilever type it is 1.5 meters by 4 meters and for an enclosed design type it is 2 meters by 4 meters. So, this is 2 meters, this is 4 meters and when we are looking at this cantilever condition in this form like this, then uh, this is again 2 meter, uh, this is sorry 1.5 meters and this is 4 meters. But if uh, uh, we are looking at the size of the bus, then this 4 meter is going to be a lesser value. So, these are the minimum values which has to be there, but desirably it can be 2.5 meters by 9 meters uh, for one bus system. Here you can see that uh, the design is being provided. So, it is a sort of a cantilever type design where some display has been provided here. This is the height which we discussed about 1.9 to 1.8 meters. Then uh, there are some displays being provided at the back. There is a sitting area. Then the safety railing is being provided at the front and then, then this gap is minimum say 0.5 meter. There is no requirement of uh, any uh, pedestrian path at the back because not much activities are there in this area. So, that is not there. Here the safety provision has been further enlarged. So, what we can see is that though the people are there, but now they can move in these two directions. So, it has been done in the sense that uh, uh, you may have uh, one gate here on the bus and another gate at the back, then this type of arrangement can also help. It also is gives an information which is the stop, what is the name of that and uh, then some displays can be there at the back depending on whatever uh, things we can use here. But one thing which is being done wrongly here is the provision of this uh, uh, non-transparent display board here because the bus is going to come from this side. Now, this passenger will not be able to see that the bus is coming. So, this is wrong, this should not be there we can have on the other side. Here what you can see is that it is a more open design, but it is at the same time being protected from the front side and it provides an entry and exit conditions at two levels. So, they are again aligned with the gate of the buses and the seating arrangements are there and stainless steel material has been used. So, it is going to be easy to clean, it is a robust material. So, those things are also being taken care of. There is a, a path at the back also. Here also the similar thing is there, but then this is a cantilever design where this is an enclosed system being provided with the transparent material and there is a dustbin also being provided here. So, some information is being given on this side. So, it is okay if it is transparent and the bus is coming from this side then this is fine, but if the bus is coming from this side then this one is not correct and it also gives an information about the bus stop. Here what we can see is a continuous bus stop because many buses probably are going to be there on this location, sitting area etc are being provided, there is a pedestrian path at the back, but then they are being segregated by way of the railings and uh, there is also this. Uh, marking being provided which is a tactile marking. So, it can be utilized by the differently abled people. This is another design, but here one problem is there that at the back the crossing area is obstructed and therefore, if there is a pedestrian then the pedestrian has to go in this way. So, this is not a good design for that, but here what we found is the design is quite good because at the back we have an ample space for pedestrian at the same time it is open on this side, there is a timetable, there are other informations, there are sitting area, there, then there are displays also being provided and this is a marked area where the bus is going to be there and stop. So, that is how the things are going to be provided in the case of uh, the bus shelters. Now, let us uh, look uh, about the 
truck laybys. Now, truck laybys, as you can see in this photograph, there is a main carriageway here. So, the trucks may be moving this way, and there is another main carriageway where the trucks are going in the opposite direction. There is a median, a wide median has been provided so as to separate out the traffic. So, the traffic may be moving at a high speed on this type of divided systems. But then there is a requirement and uh, what is being shown here is in terms of uh, this additional space which is being taken on the side of the main carriageway. So, it is again being segregated by way of uh, this uh, open type of a median and then there is a width being provided and there are vehicles that means trucks which are there, they are being parked and the width is sufficient that if there is a truck being parked, then the another one can just pass on the side of it. Now, this is a type of a thing we are saying that that is what is a truck layby. Now, why these truck laybys are required or under what conditions these truck laybys needs to be provided is what we are going to talk further. Now, if you look at the overall economic scenario in the country or across the nations, then what you found is that the economic development is continuously going on and there is a lot of requirement of the transportation of goods and say if we look at our country then the major transportation of goods is by road system. So, that means if this is happening there are going to be lot many trucks on the road and if they are there then we have to look at the capacities of the road networks and we have to see that if there are a lot many trucks which are approaching a particular location from where the things are being manufactured or they are being uh, consumed at that location, then they should not create a problem or they should not impact to the traffic on that road network. So, that adverse impact if it is going to be there, then this is also going to be detrimental to the uh, economic development and the way it is being envisaged in that area. So, when we are looking at this then there is a requirement to see that how to take care of those number of trucks which are approaching a city or any location as such. So, why these things are required has been summarized and what it says is that if the trucks have to cross the economic zones, say the state boundaries are there and they have to stop at the border for the reason of paying the taxes or for the reason of uh, getting the permissions so as to get into the another area. So, they are going to park their vehicle on the side of the road on the carriageway and if they have been parked on the carriageway it is one lane is being gone into the parking situation and then it is affecting the capacity of the road. So, these things require to have a separate area where the trucks can be parked. There can be another thing is that uh, uh, there are different type of restrictions which are being imposed uh, uh, in a city. Say there is a restriction on the movement of trucks through a city during the specific period. So, from say 8 am to 10 pm the trucks are not allowed to enter the city, but the trucks are continuously moving on a road network and when they reach at the outskirts of the city it is already more than 8 am. Now, the truck cannot come inside, so it has to be parked at the entrance of the city. So, whatever the road is giving the access to that uh, city, they are going to just pile up and lie there in a queue formation. So, if this is happening again, the same problem will come that the capacity of the carriageway is going to reduce if one of the lane is being taken for the parking purpose and this also requires that we should provide a separate space for the standing or the parking of these trucks at the border of the city. Now, queues also get formed at the check barriers. So, there is a security check going on and because these trucks are there, they are being filled with different type of materials. It takes lot of time rather than a passenger vehicle. So, this is another reason that we have to see that uh, if we can provide separate space for them, this is fine. Then the trucks which are carrying goods and they are being carried over a longer distances, then the drivers, cleaners, etcetera, whosoever are there who are operating that truck, they need locations where they can rest, they can relax, they can have bathing, they can have food, etcetera, etcetera. So, 
if we have these dedicated spaces and all of these facilities are being provided then again it is going to be beneficial. There may also be a requirement for loading and unloading of the material and again this should always be done away from the main carriageway. So, we need to have some specific locations where these things can be done without creating a problem to the through traffic on the main carriageway. In many of the cases it may be found that the truck which comes, it comes empty and when it goes out then it is loaded. So, there is a industry on this side. So, if this is happening and there are 100 of trucks which have come to take the material from this industry then all 100 trucks may not be possible, they, they, they can be accommodated with inside the industry. So, they will be going to stand outside the industry. In such cases again we need to have dedicated locations where the trucks can be parked either it can be a surface lot where the trucks are being taken away from the main carriageway and they are being parked or there is a additional lane being provided where in a queue formation those trucks are standing and one by one they are going to enter into the uh, industry. But when they are loaded they are coming out they are already ready to move so they are not going to stop and that is where there is no problem. So, when we say that we are going to have these type of truck laybys then what are the things which should be there on that truck laby location is what being talked here. What it says is that very first thing the information sign, the information sign which is telling the driver that you are approaching a truck laby location and if you desire you can stop your truck in that area. Another thing is that it should be a totally paved area. So, if the vehicle is being taken there, there should not be an issue that uh, something wrong happens and the truck gets uh, uh, just uh, uh, fixed there, it is not in a position to come out. So, the paved area has to be there, the rest area including toilets, drinking waters, bathing facilities etc. has to be there. Telephone connectivity has been one thing, but nowadays when you have the cell phones, then probably this is redundant. Illumination is another thing and that illumination should be 40 lux on the truck layby. At the same time along with the truck layby the approaches of that should also be lit and that is 50 meters length on either side of that truck layby that is going to be lit with the same illumination level. Footpaths and the curved areas, so whatever that uh, additional area is being provided like this, now there should be a footpath on the other side. So, this is uh, the main carriageway. So, we have the trucks here, main carriageway on this side, but then this is a footpath or curb side. Then if you are looking at a location where the lot of traffic is moving, then in that case there is a requirement that the median is provided at this location, so that it segregates the two traffic one getting here and one going straight. Similarly, one which is coming out and then merging into the main traffic. So, there also the ample opportunity will be there. So, segregating islands needs to be there and eateries or food stalls if they are being provided. So, that is an additional feature which may be required. Now, as per the Scotland or Ireland design manual for roads and bridges, the spacings are being defined here. What it says if it is a dual carriageway for all AADT values this spacing shall be 2.5 kilometers, but if it is a single carriageway then there is a division here and that division is from 1200 to more than 8000 AADT values and it says that if it is 1200 to 2500 then the uh, spacing can be 8 to 12 kilometers, but if it is 2500 to 8000 then it is 5 to 8 and if it is more than 8000 then it is 2 to 5 kilometers. Here you can see that what type of design can be provided. So, there is a truck layby here, now this truck layby needs to have a, a width. So, this is a paved area, the width is 7 meters. So, if it is 7 meters that means if uh, there are two trucks going side by side then that is possible that this truck can come in front of it. Then there is an island 
and this island has to be provided which is uh, not less than 1.2 meters wide uh, we have discussed about those things and it is being provided along with the chevrons in front of it. There is a flared section. So, this length which we are providing is 100 meters is straight and then the taper is 70 meters on either side. So, it is a symmetrical design being provided. Now, when this is 7 meters and say 1 meter, so 8 meters, so it is going to be roughly around 1 is to 9 flare being provided here. Whatever facilities are going to be there, those facilities will be in this area. This is a curved section. So, the curve is being provided here, it can be curve or it can be say footpath depending on the area or the requirements of that area. The main carriageway is here, there is a median in the center. Now, the information system is another thing. Now, this information system means one is that it says now you have reached the truck layby. So, the truck layby is on the left hand side because you are coming from this direction. So, you can go straight and you can bifurcate to the truck layby. So, that is one. Another one is an advanced signs. The advanced signs which says the truck layby is 250 meters ahead and the truck layby is at 500 meters ahead. So, those signs are there and that information is being given to the driver priori. So, this is another thing. Then at this point, it says that there is going to be an object marker and there is also going to be mandatory sign and this mandatory sign defines that you can go to this direction or you can go to this direction. So, either of the two paths can be taken up by the vehicles which are approaching uh, this location here. So, that is how the truck layby needs to be designed. Here this is a staggered condition where it says that a minimum distance of 150 meters shall be maintained between the two staggered truck laybys for provided for the two directional traffic. This is again another design where a further setback is also being provided here which is 3.5 meters. So, if there is a specific condition then the vehicle can come here otherwise the vehicle can be stopped on this side also and can the work can be done and moved. Here we can see the design of this island, the nose is being tapered, the chevrons are being provided here, the truck can get into this side. This is a curved section and the footpath is being provided at the back, so they can get down and then whatever the other facilities are there, they need to be provided at the back side of it. Now based on that there is a, this type of a flare, so a symmetrical sort of a design is being given, so this is 10 meters, then the length of uh, the island beyond this flare is 15 meters and then the chevrons which are being provided are 40 meters and then we have the additional tapered section which is 40 meters to 70 meters. So, if we go by this of 40 meters, so it is 40 and 40, 80 and then 90, 100 and 105 meters have been provided on that side. Similarly, when it is going to get into the system and the traffic is moving here, so you have to accelerate and that is where 110 to 130 meter has been defined on that side uh, for the trucks to get into uh, the system and merge there. This is a case where the speeds are not much, say it is uh, not exceeding 65 kilometers per hour at a more simpler design, uh, not much segregation is being done at this level, the traffic is probably not that high and therefore, this simpler one can be utilized where this side is 45 meters, but then this is 25 meters. So, the merging is quite faster as compared to the previous case. So, with this we close our interaction in this lecture and we will be continuing our interaction again, but then the topic is going to be the bus rapid transit facility. Till then, thank you and bye.